Thank you, Jesse. And thank you to Medicine Song Woman for the smudge and for the welcome song and for beginning us in such a good way. And to Jackie and the band for that amazing, amazing song. I'm very grateful to be here tonight to honor the Reverend, very Reverend Dr. Stan Mackay and Dr. Cindy Blackstock. It's a great honor for me to be here. And I'm very grateful for all of you for showing up and by doing so to show your commitment to changing the way our nation and our church understand ourselves and how we'll walk together in a good way into the future. I'd like to thank the Toronto United Church Council for asking me to speak. And on behalf of the United Church of Canada, I want to congratulate you and wish you a very uh, happy 125th anniversary. As you've heard, my name is Jordan Cantwell, and I live in Treaty 6 territory in Saskatoon. <laughs> I've been asked to uh, speak to the doctrine of discovery, what it is, and what it means to repudiate it, as our church and many churches have done. So very briefly, the doctrine of discovery is a legal framework that is based, as you heard, on uh, centuries-old papal bulls, a number of different papal bulls uh, that came out right around the time that Europeans were deciding they'd like to take over the world. And the, the sum total of those papal bulls and their implications that, can, that came together to form the doctrine of discovery essentially says that if European Christians arrive in a land and there are no other European Christians already there, then that land is essentially fair for the taking, that it's unoccupied, that whoever does live there doesn't count. They're not real people. Uh, they can be converted, they can be enslaved, or they can be eradicated. Those are the options for those folks. But the land itself belongs to the first European Christians who arrive. It belongs to their monarch. That's the doctrine of discovery. Now, that, that is the doctrine, that's the legal framework on which our nation of Canada was founded. That's what allows Canada to be here as Canada. And that legal framework continues to operate today. The doctrine of discovery is still at the root of many of our laws. And you'll see it in practice all the time whenever resources are discovered under the ground where some indigenous people are living. Well, those people can just then be moved so that Canada can get at those resources. You also see the doctrine of discovery at work when Canada decides who's an indigenous person and who isn't. So, that's just a little bit about the doctrine of discovery. It's easy, easy in some ways to just say, well, we repudiate that, obviously. And so it's, what's surprising is how long it took us to do it. But the church, the United Church of Canada and many other churches, including the World Council of Churches, have at last repudiated this doctrine to say that's bunk, that's disgusting, and, and we say it's wrong. So what does it mean to say it's wrong? What does it mean for us to say that beyond the fact that we think it's wrong? What does it mean when the doctrine of discovery is still operating in our legal framework. It's actually the doctrine of discovery that gives us title to the lands that we occupy, all the lands on which our churches are built, belong to the United Church of Canada because of the doctrine of discovery. Now, you may or may not know that the United Church of Canada is very, very wealthy. We don't feel wealthy, but we are very wealthy. And much of our wealth, most of our wealth, is tied up in our buildings and the land on which they sit. So what does it mean for the United Church of Canada to repudiate the legal system 
that gives us title to that land. I want to tell you a little story about Saskatchewan Conference, where I come from. Saskatchewan Conference was bequeathed a number of years ago title to a piece of land, the Moats land. It's called the Moats Land Fund. Now on this piece of land, there's some agricultural land that's leased out to some farmers that's generating lots of revenue, and there's oil under the ground. And there's lots of money coming to the United Church in Saskatchewan Conference from that oil under that ground. Now, as part of our repudiation of the doctrine of discovery, the church understood that we needed to call our governments to account, to say, you know, we got to change how we're doing things here in Canada. And so you, government of Saskatchewan, you need to be sharing the resources, the revenue from the resources, the potash and the oil and the uranium that you're extracting, because you're extracting that from indigenous lands. You need to share that. We wrote to the government. We told them. And then somebody said to us at one of our conference annual meetings, so about that Moats Land Fund. Now, we fund good work with that money. In fact, Saskatchewan Conference wasn't sure it would survive without the Moats Land Fund. We depend on that income to do the great ministry that we do. There was a lot of fear and trepidation when folks suggested that if we were calling the government to share revenue from resources, that perhaps we had better do the same ourselves. And there was some angst, as you might imagine. But I am happy to report that our better angels prevailed. And the United Church understood in Saskatchewan that we needed to practice what we preach. That in fact, if we could not exist without continuing to perpetrate injustices against the first peoples of this land, then we ought not exist. If the only way for us to continue to be the church in the 21st century is to hang on to something that's ours, we've got no business existing. And so uh, a sharing arrangement was worked out. 50% of that, those monies now go to indigenous communities within the church to do with as they will. Saskatchewan Conference is still around, at least till the remits pass. <laughs> we didn't disappear. So I wonder then what it means for the rest of the church, for all of us, as we think about the resources at our disposal and what we will do with them, to repudiate the doctrine of discovery, to actually say we don't believe in and we don't credit the title that has been given to us to the land on which our churches are built. That in fact, we understand that to be for the good of all, belonging to, to be shared with, particularly the peoples who were here before us. If we can't survive as a church without that money, then we shouldn't survive. But, if we truly believe that God desires right relationship, if we truly believe that God longs for us to in fact have a more just country, to re-found this nation on principles of sharing and honesty and truth and justice, then we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear by doing the right thing. So that, I think, is what it means to repudiate the doctrine of discovery, to proceed without fear, to say that we will not be tied to money, we will be tied to our neighbors. We will be tied to our relatives. Thank you.